Good evening, friends. Happy Thursday. Um, this is Dive into AI with Meredith, and we are getting started in just a couple of minutes. So while the timer counts down, you guys come on in, and I am excited, excited that you guys are here on this awesome Thursday evening, and I will be right back to jump right into week two of Dive into AI. I am so excited. I um, I just, I don't want to talk the whole time while we're counting down, but I just get excited. I'm super excited about, <laughs> I'm super excited about AI and I could talk about it all day, but um, we're going to get into our content in just a moment, but welcome, welcome. And as you um, come in, just say hello in the chat, please, so that I know you're here. And if you have any questions, um, please be sure to drop those down in the chat and I will do my best to answer them this evening. And if it's something that I don't know, I will try to get the answer for you before next week. Um, and my goal is to try to get a couple of other experts in AI um, to join me one of these Thursdays while we're doing this this 12 week series to answer some of your questions. Um, I'm really looking for someone to talk about um, privacy issues as it pertains to AI. So I am going to check with some of my fabulous friends that are also um, experts in AI and see who I can get to join me. I'm gonna see who's available one of these Thursdays to come on and chat with me and answer some of you guys' questions. So uh, we'll be getting started shortly. All right. Good evening, everyone. Happy Thursday. This is the seven o'clock uh, dive into AI with Meredith. Uh, happy Thursday evening. I hope that your week is going well. My week has um, been relatively good. It has not been without hiccups, but we are not here to talk about <laughs> that this evening. But I am excited to be with you guys. Um, you might be able to tell from the things that I post on social media that I am like all into AI like I think I'm addicted. <laughs> I don't think I need a support group yet because I think it's it's probably I'll say maybe a healthy addiction or it's it's something uh intriguing and hell uh healthy and uh rel relatively safe uh to be interested in slash addicted to. So I'm excited to um come to you guys this week and share what I have been up to and answer some questions and show you some of my favorite tools. So let's get into it. Um, I'm going to share my screen and I'm glad that I'm on camera this week and not showing my lap. We had a little mishap last week, which was a little entertaining, but hey, whatever. <laughs> so let me share my screen. Okay. So this is week two of Dive into AI with Meredith. So you guys can get my exclusive um, AI toolkit by going to this link and I'm going to just copy this and share this right in the chat so that you guys can have access to that. And I am also going to, um, I'm going to put that right up here, drop this right here. So you guys can see that, um, it's just bit.ly dive into AI. So you guys can get your, um, Get my exclusive toolkit there if you are interested in that. It comes with um, a few different tools that you can try, some explain, um, explanation of terminology and things of that nature. So I want to kind of hop into some AI news that um, has come out this week. So I think a lot of people probably are familiar with um, Google Workspace. Um, and also like a lot of people use Gmail, but they also have a business version of that called Google Workspace. So you may use Google Workspace um, in your job or you may have it for business. 
but a lot of people you know are familiar with google and their suite of tools and let me see can i make this i think that's it's big enough i think you guys should be able to see that um you're familiar with their uh, workspace and so they are they just recently introduced um google duet or i'm sorry duet ai which is going to work with um google workspace so what this does is bring ai features into um google workspace so like into your google docs um it says we make workspace or we, we're making workspace even more helpful with duet ai so what this does is brings ai features into um your google workspace experience so it'll help you with google docs so with this it says unlock new ways um, of working with google duet so it'll help you write like customer proposals in your docs in google docs it'll help you draft emails when you're writing um, when you're creating emails in Gmail, like if you need to respond to a customer or you need to send a pitch or respond to a customer service complaint, this will help you like with what you want to say so that it sounds like professional and all of that. So it is like an upsell. It's available to enterprise customers and I think that it's $30 a month, but I definitely think this is something that people need to get accustomed to. So that kind of, um, brings me to one of the questions that I got this week here um, where one of my sorority sisters asked me why do I have to use it so I think that that is a great question she's referring to why um, does she have to use AI so I think that that is a great question um, and my answer to why do I have to use AI it's actually, you know, it depends. So you don't, we don't have to use AI. I don't feel as though we are forced to, although um, AI is integrated in a lot of the products and services that we already use. Like if you use Siri on your iPhone, that's, you know, artificial intelligence. Or if you use Alexa, like if you have, um, you know, Alexa dev enabled devices in your house or in your phone or whatever, um, that's using artificial intelligence. Um, there are so many different like assistive tools that we have access to now. Sometimes it's baked in, but sometimes we voluntarily go use it like chat G J chat gpt which is one of my favorite tools like i think that everybody should be using chat gpt and i know you know not everybody does i think i heard a statistic that open ai says that they have like one is it 1.5 or 1 point something million active users monthly active users so that's a small percentage of the population um in the united states i think last i heard is there like 330 million uh citizens in the united states so you know one 1 1.5 million is a small percentage of um you know people that are using you know ai um in the united states but i think that it's a tool that um, a lot of people should learn to work with, like learn how to ask questions, you know, learn it, and what and what that is, is called writing prompts, um, learn how to write prompts. You can get a lot of good information out of chat GPT. It's a little bit different than asking Google. Um, you can have conversations with chat GPT. Um, if you need further explanation, you can just kind of say, you know, can you explain this further? So that's what I love about chat G GPT. And that's just one AI tool. There are so many others and I'm going to get into a few others today, but I found this graphic. I've come across, across this graphic a few times and I, I think this is, it rings true for me. I know this won't, you know, resonate with everybody, but it says that AI will not replace humans, but humans with AI will replace humans without AI. <laughs> so I think that's kind of funny, but I think it's a little bit true. Like as we um, learn to use these tools, I think that um, we are going to be more marketable or I won't say have access to better information, but I think we'll be more efficient if we know how to use AI tools. And I do think that that is going to be um, something that's valued in the marketplace. So I'm super excited about it. I want to show all my friends about it. I want them to learn the tools and I want us to be able, you know, to talk shop and be able to share like what tools we're using and all of that good stuff. 
So if you once again, if you are uh, just tuning in, thank you for being here. I am Meredith Hurston. This is Dive Into AI with Meredith. This is week two. And if you have any questions about AI, please uh, drop them in the chat. And if you don't have any questions, just say hello and let me know that you're here. Let me know where you're tuning in from. I'm happy that you're here. And I hope that um, you can benefit and learn something while you're here. So um and we were talking about Google Duet a little bit ago. And so I kind of showed you some of the features that they're bringing to Google Workspace. Um, so I'll go back to that for a second. So you're going to be able to create projects. Um, like it'll, it's going to help you like optimize like using like Google Sheets and Google Docs. Um, it's going to uh, add additional functionality to it. And from my understanding, the price point is $30 a month. So it's not um it's not free it's not a free enhancement that's being rolled into the existing um google workspace google workspace plans it is like an upsell but um i think that uh i'm curious to hear when people start um implementing this how they're going to enjoy it so um the next uh similarly situated tool is microsoft copilot so you know google and microsoft are kind of like competitors um because they have very similar um products in terms of like microsoft 365 versus google workspace so um microsoft copilot is the equivalent tool to google duet so they're bringing um artificial intelligence like enabled uh, capabilities to the Microsoft 365 um, suite of services and you can learn about that by going to um, this website here they have like a little video that shows you how copilot works so it's going to be like fully integrated into um, the Microsoft 365 suite of tools and I have already seen um copilot a little bit of copilot tools show up in um, my office 365 that i have for my full-time job as well as my own subscription to microsoft microsoft 365 for my business so there are some copilot tools already there i haven't played around with them a lot to be honest because i'm down the rabbit hole on <laughs> a bunch of other tools but a um, bunch of other ai tools like chat gpt primarily but they do have a video here on this page and you guys can get access to these um no, the notes from today's um episode um and i will give you a link to that um and actually if you are interested in um getting my exclusive toolkit my ai toolkit if you go to the um the link that i have here this bitly link here bit.ly slash dive into AI. If you go there and sign up for our um, newsletter, I'm going to send out the show notes to you guys this week. Um, and we're going to, I'm going to circle back on that, that point in just a second. So um, let's talk about some of the tools I love. And I want to do a little bit of demonstration um, on some of these AI powered tools. So the first one that we are going to look at is called chat doc. So chat doc is here and this is a little bit of an infographic about the tool and we're going to get into the tool in just a second. Um, so what this has, maybe I can make this bigger. I don't want to make it too big though. Um, so what this has is optical character recognition. So what you can do is upload your PDF documents and you can search and converse with the documents like to get information. So I like this tool for research. So I think a lot of you guys know that I work in the healthcare space. I'm a clinical laboratory scientist by trade. I am not um, like a trained researcher, but I am a, cur a naturally curious person and I tend to do a lot of research on my own, but I do not conduct re clinical research. So I don't want to say that I'm a researcher because I don't want people to be confused and think that I'm a clinical researcher because that's not how I'm classically trained. I am classically trained as a clinical laboratory scientist, though, and I'm a naturally curious person. So I um, scientific papers kind of throw me for a loop at times just because of the way that they're structured and, you know, how they have tables and um, like the discussion and the conclusion, um, sometimes it could be a little, um, 
it sometimes it goes over my head you know depending on the topic a lot of this stuff it, it goes over my head i'll, I'll just keep it 100 for sure <laughs> I, ain't gonna, I ain't gonna fake i ain't gonna hold you but um sometimes i get a little bit confused about what they're saying so i like chat doc because you can upload a um a scientific paper into chat doc and then you can ask questions so this is inside my uh chat doc account this is a pay plan with chat doc i think it's like 5.99 a month and you know relatively expensive and you can upload up to 300 pages of documents and i'm gonna stop and take a drink of my beverage and if who's ever on here with me uh what are you guys sipping on this evening Drop that down in the chat. And if this is your first time joining Dive Into AI, say hello and let me know that you're here. Let me know where you're tuning in from. Drop a one in the chat if this is your first time joining me for Dive Into AI. This is week two and um, week one replay is available. If you're watching me on um, Facebook, you can scroll back in my Facebook timeline and see from last week, you can watch that episode. And also on YouTube, it's available on YouTube. And you can um, check out the replay from last week there. Hey, Wanda. <laughs> Thank you for joining in. You, you sipping on water this evening? I need to get in my water. So when I get off of here, I am going to go grab some more water um, so I can finish my water intake for today. But I'm, I'm happy you're here. Thank you for joining me live. So this is inside a chat doc. So I have a couple of documents that I have imported and... Um, Miss Wanda is having water this evening. <laughs> so um, I um, am inside of my chat doc. And let's see. We want to talk about the role of artificial intelligence. I think this article is regarding artificial intelligence in healthcare in patient safety outcomes. So what I like about chat doc, you can see that I've had some conversation um, with the document so it brings the document in on the left side so this is a 31 page document and it starts you know with the abstract abstract the objective of the paper the methods the research you know the the typical scientific paper sometimes this stuff can be a little bit overwhelming so i'm not going to scroll through all 31 pages but here i asked it on the right hand side i asked the question how have ai algorithms been used to extract safety related information from clinical notes and reports so it gives me um different different sections of this paper that have addressed this and it answers the question so it gives me like several different um sections of the paper that have answered this question and so it um when you click here it'll take you to the section that answers that question or that discusses that question so I find this to be really helpful because you can ask your questions and glean from the document without having to kind of read all 31 pages. <laughs> so that's a time saver. That's what I love about AI. It helps you be more efficient. It helps you save time. It helps you kind of get to the information or get to the thing that you're trying to do um, more expeditiously. And that's what I love. So the other cool feature of chat doc is if you click this light bulb, it will give you recommended questions. So this is all based on the article that is over here on your left. So it could be an article about anything, you know, or a scientific paper about anything. And it will, the artificial intelligence behind this program will kind of scan this document and help you like suggest questions to you that um, may be beneficial to help you summarize the article. So here, I think it gives you three questions. So, oh, actually it gives you five. So what is the impact of lack of standard benchmarks on reported AI models in healthcare? How do safety outcomes correlate with AI performance measures in healthcare? What are the potential risks associated with relying on AI outcomes that, not have, that have not been evaluated against standard benchmarks? Um, how have AI algorithms been used to extract safety related information from clinical notes and reports? I think that's a good question to kind of query the document about. And what challenges and difficulties arrive from heterogeneity in reporting an AI model of AI model studies in healthcare? I kind of don't understand that question. See, that's this whole scientific paper going over your head. But 
I like um, chat doc to help you kind of get to the summary of the the paper so that's a good resource for students um people conducting research like writing you know doing lit reviews writing papers i think this is a great resource so that is available at chatdoc.com and it's a pretty um pretty inexpensive so the next tool that i want to show you guys i play with over the weekend and it is called formwise so FormWise is a paid tool, but it is um, super, and this is probably more so geared to business owners and um, people that are into marketing. But what I like about FormWise is it helps you use AI to um, create forms. <laughs> So, um, or create applications. So you can create like your own kind of like mini software and, and share this with your customers or share this with um, prospective customers. And I want to show you how I used FormWise to create a tool. So if you guys know me from social media, you know, I have been interested in AI here recently. Um, well, I've been interested in AI. I've been using um, various AI tools for the last few years. Um, I got heavily interested in AI a couple of years ago when I built a machine learning project. And it's using Python code and it's like a proprietary product. And the goal of it is to um, classify adverse events. So it basically will read um it'll read I'm, how, i want to give the simplest way to explain what it does it reads an excel document it reads the contents of a column in an excel document and it classifies the contents of like each cell and it gives it um it gives it like a category so it'll assign it a category to say like it was a fall or it was a medication error or there's like 20 different types of categories it could be so it will read um the cell in the column and it'll identify that um that specific event and, and like tag it so that's the first kind of like project that i built with ai and it was super complicated i don't know why i started with that but i had a need for it like in the work that i do so that was like when i first got really exposed to ai but since then i have played around with like uh chat gpt um and other like text generation tools like other chat they're called chat bots um i play around with other chat bots and i've also gotten into creating um ai art so i created this tool using formwise to um generate prompts for mid-journey particularly for black or african-american art so um there are like certain keywords that you have to put into um into mid journey in order to get the style of art that you want. So I created this tool and this is what it looks like. It kind of gives you an explanation, you know, here up top about, you know, what it's for and, you know, the intended use. And it gives you a few steps on how to use the tool. So let's say that we want to see um, black women in, or um, a group of black women in Paris and then my name is Meredith and my email address oops. okay so once you enter in your email address you click create prompts and it is thinking and it is creating a prompt. It's telling me it's got a few seconds more, but it's thinking the AI is working in the background. And voila, here we go. <laughs> we have our, um, our mid journey prompts for our group of black women in Paris. So it gives you four different um, prompts that you could try. So I actually want to bring up mid journey and we're going to try some of these prompts. So <laughs> Wanda said, wow, <laughs> isn't that cool? Wanda, I think this is so cool. So, um, 
this this is an AI tool that I created. And let me just kind of um, reset really quick and welcome people that um, have joined in the last few minutes. Welcome to week two of Dive Into AI with Meredith. I am Meredith Hurston, and we are in the middle of doing a demonstration of a tool, an AI tool that I created with a program called FormWise. And so this um, gives you a mid-journey prompts. And it's, this is specifically designed to give you prompts that are going to generate art that look like black people or melanated people. So um, what it gives you, so, you know, and we're going to hop into Midjourney and try one of these prompts out. But, and you know, when you do use Midjourney, you do slash imagine, and then you put in your prompt. So the first one is a group of black women in Paris. Each is a gorgeous sable color skin wearing elegant dresses and stylish hats. They are walking along the Champs-Élysées with the iconic Arc de Triomphe in the background. The scene is bathed in warm golden sunlight, casting shadows. Doesn't that just make you want to go to Paris right now? <laughs> this level of detail and description. The atmosphere is filled with sophistication and confidence, capturing the essence of Parisian chic. I want to go. Don't you want to go, Wanda? <laughs> The scene is visualized in a high resolution phot photograph with a full frame DSLR camera with a prime lens to capture the intricate details and vibrant color of the surroundings. And it's telling us an aspect ratio of 16 by 19. So that's going to be a wide, like your wide angle or like a, what is it? A wide, I think wide angle view. I don't know. And we're going to do run on mid journey version 5.22. So let me copy this prompt and we are going to head over to mid journey and we are going to run this prompt. So slash imagine, paste that in there. And I think I want to run this two times just to, um, to see what we get. So I'm going to do, uh, dash dash repeat to and let's see yes I am sure that I want to run it twice while that's running let's take a look at the other um, prompts that it gave us so number two is a group of black women in Paris with their natural hairstyle and intricate braids and adorned with colorful beads. They are sitting on a cozy cafe in a quaint Parisian on a quaint Parisian street, enjoying cups of steaming coffee and engaging in lively conversations. The environment is filled with charming old buildings with flower boxes hanging from the windowsills. The sound of laughter and clinking glasses fills the air. The mood is vibrant and energetic, um, capturing the joy of friendship in the vibrant Africa atmosphere of Parisian cafe culture. This scene is visualized in an illustration using bold lines, vibrant colors to bring out the lively spirit of the moment. I love that. Um, let's see what Wanda said. Uh, since you're, this is your personal tool that you created, would you teach a course to show others how to build a model or similar? Um, what's the skill or level of person would need to build a similar model? And yes, I need a trip to Paris. Absolutely. I can't wait um, to get back to Paris. I, I love, um, I've been to Paris once and I, I love the atmosphere. So I'm, I can't wait to get back to it. But um, to your question, um, I could teach a course on this. Absolutely. Um, I, I can pull that together and check to see um, if there is interest in more <laughs> girl strip. Yes. <laughs> If there are more students interested in using or learning how to build with form wise, absolutely. Um, what's the skill of a person that would need to build a similar model? Um, I would say this may not be for a super beginner, someone that has no exposure, like no previous exposure to AI. I would say probably an intermediate user of ChatGPT would be well capable of um, creating a tool like this for it could be um, you know for mid journey prompts or it could be like to to do a number there are a number of use cases for um, for form wise so absolutely um, I can give some thought to that and kind of come up with a few different use cases and I'd be happy to teach a class on how to um, create create um, with form wise create your own tool with form wise um, thanks for your question. So let's hop back into Discord and see what we got. 
So this is the first set. Okay. Okay. I see the Shanzi Lizay in the background. Or I'm um, not the Shanzi Lizay, the Aunt the Triumph. Um in the background. I like it. Um let me see which one of these I would like to um upscale. So I was kind of digging number two, but I think well we might have to crop her out because it looked like sis on the right side is halfway flashing us. Um and we don't want that. But they all have on elegant hats. These are pretty awesome. Yeah, so let's upscale number two just to see what we get. And then let's look at the second set of images that it generated. So this is nice. I like number four. These ladies are smiling and looking beautiful in their dresses. For some reason, it picked a, a theme of brown. I'm not really sure why. Maybe it's, it's thinking that it's fall or something like that. But um, these are pretty cool. So looking at the upscale image, yeah, I think we might have to to do some some light edit work on um, this lady here on the far right side. And now that I'm looking at <laughs> these eyes, yeah, we this this would be a Photoshop job. But the general um, the general layout is it's pretty cool. It's not bad. You like it, Wanda? Thanks. I like it too. Um, okay, so let's run another one of these prompts and see what we get. Let me see between two, three, and four, which one I like the best. Three is imagine a group of women gracefully dancing in a ballroom. That might be complicated. I wonder how it would do with that. A group of black women exploring the vibrant street scene in the neighborhood of I don't know if that's my March, my Marty. I'm not really sure um, how to pronounce that word, but let's grab number four and see what we get in Mid Journey. So slash imagine. Well, I'm just going to paste this prompt right in here. Okay, Wanda, we can um, try number three. Let me go grab number three and we can run that one as well. Okay, and so while those are generating, let's um, get back to our week two kind of notes for this session. So if you are interested in trying out the Mid Journey Prompt Generator, I am going to drop the link in the chat. And I actually think, um, the link doesn't really show up in um, Facebook. I hope that you guys can see the link here. Um, let me try to drop the link from my phone because I want you guys to have this link. Um, and it looks like it's only going to my YouTube because I'm simultaneously um, streaming to YouTube and Facebook. And it looks like with the platform, it's only allowing me to post the um the links to post the links to um to YouTube. So I am going to see if I can drop it here. Is it gonna let me? Yep, here it is. Okay. And you can try the tool out yourself. Okay, so the link is there. So hopefully you can see that, but it's bit.ly um, black art MJ. So that's how you can try the tool out on your own. And let's hop back over to mid journey and see what we got. So this is prompt number four. So this is in the neighborhood that I can't pronounce Mont Montemart, I think in Paris. Um, so I like number one, number one looks cool. So does number two, looks like these ladies are having a good time. <laughs> Um, number three looks cool. 
and as well as number four although um number four kind of look like some this lady on the far right side got something going on that we might need to edit up a little bit in photoshop but it looks pretty um it looks pretty cool but if i had to use them as is i would go with number one number one or number three and I know we talked about last week for any um, new users of Midjourney, um, when you are creating in Midjourney, it always gives you four different images. And so the images are counted on uh, one, two, three, four. So the upper left is one, upper right is two, uh, lower left is three, lower right is four. So that's what we got for prompt number four. And then this is prompt number three. So let's see what we got with the ladies dancing so they have them on formal ball gowns and everything or cocktail dresses um these look pretty cool i like which one do you like wanda which one do you like the best i thought this might present some challenges i guess because i didn't give or well it i guess the prompt did say with flowing skirts <laughs> let's let's look at the prompt what did the prompt say uh, in a grand ballroom adorned with crystal chandeliers and intricate gold details, they are wearing elegant evening gowns with flowing skirts that twirl with every step. <laughs> the environment is filled with enchanting melodies of a live orchestra and the air is filled with the soft scent of roses. The mood is romantic and enchanting, uh, capturing the elegance of timeless beauty of a Parisian ball. The scene is visualized in a sculpture with each figure delicately carved from marble to capture the grace and movement of the dancers. So this is interesting. So Wanda likes number two. So let's upscale number two. And I will send this to you, Wanda, so that you can use it as you would like. So this is number two. I love her dress. That dress is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So, okay. So let's get into... what's next you're welcome um i wanted to talk about a couple of different ways that i use chat gpt um because my goal with doing these weekly sessions is to show people that there are everyday use cases for chat gpt um a lot of us you know we work in corporate environments and um, you can use ChatGPT to like help you summarize meeting minutes. Um, there are so many <laughs> different things that you can do with ChatGPT. And you know, it can, it can really help you kind of like shine, make you look smart <laughs> in front of your friends and colleagues. Um, so for example, today I had a, um, I helped a colleague with um, some data analytics and I did it with the assistance of ChatGPT and I, it kind of wowed me <laughs> it was pretty cool but i want to um show you guys so last week of course we had week one of um dive into ai with meredith and this was uh live streamed on both youtube and facebook so i went to youtube and i downloaded the uh the transcript and i don't know if you guys are familiar with um with how you can get the um, transcript from YouTube, but let me show you. Hopefully, it's not going to cause a bunch of feedback. I'm going to try to turn this down. Um, oh, it's not going to automatically play good. So this was our um, the live stream from last week. So if you don't know how to um, download transcripts, you can go right here to show transcript. And if you do live streams, what I did notice is that the transcript was not available. Um, until the next day. So I don't know if it takes like 12 or 24 hours in order for the tra um, transcript to become available, but it's not available immediately like with some of the short form videos. But what you can do, what I find helpful is to go up here, these three dots and do toggle timestamps and that takes the timestamps away and you can just do, just highlight and oops, drag down. I went too far, too fast. Um, you just drag it all the way to the bottom 
and right click on it, copy it, and then you can paste it into a text document. So that's how I got this document that I'm, that I'm getting ready to work with. So what I want to do is show you guys how you can create like show notes or this would be applicable to like meeting minutes, any type of um, text version, like text document that you might have. So what we'll do is create a new document and we're using um, ChatGPT4. So this is available in the paid version of ChatGPT, which is available for $20 a month um, through OpenAI. So we're going to be using the advanced data analysis tab, which is the beta feature. So click there under GPT-4. So this will allow you to upload a file. So we're going to do upload file and going to go to downloads. Oh, wait, I think it's on my desktop. Go to desktop. And this is my file where I saved the, um, the show notes from or where I saved the transcript from last week. So we are going to import that into ChatGPT. And so um, you can see the document here, dive into AI with Meredith week one transcript. And we are going to say, please summarize this file and give me show notes with bullet points. And let's see what it gives us. And look how fast it goes. <laughs> so it says, all right, I'll start by reading the content of your file. Once I have a grasp of the content, I will provide you with a summarized version in the form of show notes with bullet points. Let's begin. So it has read my file. And it's telling me what it thinks this document is. And ChatGPT has never seen this document before. So what is it saying? This content appears to begin with the speaker addressing an audience and experiencing some, tef <laughs> some technical difficulties <laughs> with our camera and screen sharing tool. <laughs> oh my God. This is lightweight embarrassing, but it's funny because that did happen last week because I was new to using Ecamm and it was on the wrong camera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to provide a comprehensive summary and show notes, I'll proceed with analyzing the rest of the content and capture the main points and topics discussed. There seems to be structured in short sections or sentences. It appears that Meredith is addressing her audience, managing technical difficulties. This is hilarious. And introducing herself. I mean, like, wow. <laughs> From the initial sections, we understand Meredith is the presenter and she's... <laughs> So I, at this point, I feel like ChatGPT is clowning me. So I don't know if y'all heard me talk about it before, but I referred to ChatGPT as Starlet. So Starlet is clowning me at this point because she's like, Meredith continues to address her technical difficulties. <laughs> oh my God. But anyway, uh, to filter the main points, um, identifies herself as an AI enthusiast and learning developer, plans to cover the basics of AI, um, receives qu questions prior to the session, um, mention tools or platforms related to AI, such as image creators and playground AI. Um, thanks to our audience for their patience. This is so funny. <laughs> Hi, Sharika. How are you this evening? So you like number two as well? Cool. I can send you, um, I can send you the image as well. So look out for that after we, um, we hop off this live. So let's see what it says about the um, the bullet points of the conversation. Introduction um, and its foundational concepts uh, demonstrates how AI can assist with solving difficult math problems. Um, discussion on how AI can be used to write, debug, and explain code. Um, tips on how to leverage AI to increase productivity. Um, and manage daily tasks. Mention of potential technical difficulties with screen sharing. Okay, Starlet, you're getting on my nerves and explore how AI processes inputs and generates conversational outputs, um, reference to past training, demonstration of practical AI applications for business users, user owners and beginners, um, mention of tools and resources such as YouTube script writers and article creation using AI. So um, this is basically what I talked about last week. Um, can you please rewrite 
the show notes and not call attention to the technical difficulties that Meredith experienced because she's embarrassed by it. Of course. <laughs> You gotta love computers. They'll do what you ask and they don't get tired. Here's a revised set of show notes without mention of technical difficulties. So it kind of shortened the bullet points. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, so now I'll ask, can you please give me 10 bullet points to summarize these show notes and number them. So even though it gave me eight before, <laughs> This is funny, right, Wanda? So even though it gave me before, I asked it to give me 10. So we're going to see what it comes up with. And as you can see, it numbered them. So introduction to foundational AI concepts, demonstration capabilities of math, uh, AI for coding, leveraging AI for enhanced daily productivity, understanding AI's conversational output, um, highlight of past uh, chat GPT training for email creation, practical AI applications, um, tools for script writing, content creation, exploration of AI inputs, processing mechanisms, and highlighting resources for AI-driven content creation. So I think this is a pretty good um, summary of what I talked about last week. And we kind of got here by iterating a few times to get like what I want. So um, my plan is to take this little bulleted list. And so what you can do is you can click copy. There's a couple of ways you could do this. You could click copy when you're done, like when you get what you want. So I can go back to like my um, to my Google Doc for this week and I can just do command V and um, paste that right into my Google Doc. So now I have or you could paste it into whatever doc you're working with. I believe this works in Word as well. Um, so you can just kind of go and, you know, put your show notes there. Um, you could put it like if you have a Word plus a WordPress blog or a Squarespace, Wix, whatever platform you're on um, or even if you just want to. Um, throw this into like a Facebook post or something so that you can uh, give a summary of, you know, your show notes or however you want to use um, your output that you got from ChatGPT, you can just copy it and paste it into whatever, um, whatever uh, platform you're using. So I think that's great. So I'm going to put this on my blog and uh, put a link to the, the um, I'm going to embed the, uh, the YouTube and so people can go there and watch the replay and they'll kind of see the the show note the highlights of the show notes and I'll actually give them um, the transcript as well if they would like that so I think this is a good use case for using chat GPT so has anybody used um, chat GPT in this way before did you find this helpful um, to see that you can actually upload documents if you use so this recently changed names this advanced data analysis it used to be called code interpreter so I think it just changed names within the last week or two is now known as advanced data analysis. So where you'll find that is at the top of the chat. If you click on new chat, um, but this is only in um, the paid version of chat GPT in uh, chat G or chat GPT plus. So if you go to GPT four, this is your advanced data analysis um, tool and it's um, different than the default because you, you don't have the option to upload files in your in your default setting so that is one handy way that you can um, use chat gpt um, to make you more efficient so you don't have to sit there and you know come up with your own um, show notes bullet points things of that sort 
So the next thing that I want to show you guys is um, so that's how we can create summaries of documents or meeting minutes. Do you guys have any questions? Take a pause and drink some of my coffee. And if there's any tools that you um, are interested in seeing me demo, please drop those in the chat as well or send me a message. And I'm happy to look into them if I'm not familiar or um, to demo them for you if I am familiar. So the other thing I want to show you is that you can use ChatGPT to help you write long form content. An example of this is a book that I recently received. I got it in the mail. Hopefully you guys can see this. Let me see. Let me change to the camera. And I'm going to hold this up. So... This is my copy of Finding Your Light, which is a um, guided journal for the resilient black woman embracing life beyond childlessness. So I just got this copy of this book that I um, that I wrote, that I published um, through Noir Creative Markets, <laughs> designed especially for um, black women who are childless, not by choice. And... You can see um, the dedication, the author's note. Um, welcome to your healing journey. Instructions for using this workbook. Acknowledging your feelings. So this is a guided journal, right? With line pages and it goes through um, various prompts that um, are... Um, it's a guided journal, like a, a journal for healing for, um, for black women who are childless, not by choice. So I was able to um, use ChatGPT to help me write um, some of that, help me get my thoughts together. Like I shared my story and I used ChatGPT to help me like elaborate it in, in the book. So I told a little bit of my story in, um, let's see, in the author's note section. So I shared a little bit of my own story and I used ChatGPT to help me write that. And you can do the same. <laughs> you can use ChatGPT to help you write as well. And it doesn't write, it assists you with writing. It doesn't write for you, but it assists you with writing. And that's what I love about, um, about using ChatGPT. So you can, um, for example, if you want to, part of this book is like affirmations. So say, let's start a new chat here. And we want, I like to use chat GPT plus because I feel like it's a little more robust. So let me go back to my screen share. Okay, so we are going to start a new chat. And I'm going to say... Can you help me write or can you help help me come up with 20 or no 10 affirmations for remaining hopeful? Now let's just see what it says. Of course, here are 10 affirmations to help you remain hopeful. So these sound pretty decent, right? Every challenge I face is an opportunity for growth and transformation. My spirit is resilient and unbreakable even in the face of adversity. I believe in endless possibilities of the future and trust the journey of life. Each new day brings a fresh start and a chance to embrace hope or hope anew. Um, each new day brings a fresh start and a chance to em Oops, I read that twice. I surround myself with positivity and I'm always guided towards the best outcomes. Um, so let's take one of these and expand upon it. So let's do number five. We're going to copy paste that there. Say, can you help me 
expand on number five. Um, and see what it says. So you can use this to like, you know, draw inspiration from yourself or for yourself. Um, I consciously choose to surround myself with positivity through the people I interact with, the environments I place myself in, and the thoughts I entertain. Each decision I make, no matter how small, is influenced by my commitment to embrace a positive mindset. So that's a great reminder to that your attitude is everything. As I immerse myself in uplifting experiences and nourishing relationships, I find that the universe responds in kind. Um, and this guiding light of positivity ensures that even when faced with setbacks or challenges, I remain resilient and optimistic. With every step I take, I trust that I'm being directed towards the best outcome, not just for myself, but for everyone around me. My positive energy serves as a beacon, drawing experiences and opportunities that align with higher purpose and aspirations. Um, using aspiration or affirmations with deeper explanations can help reinforce and solidify their meanings in your mind, enhancing your overall effectiveness. So like this would be something great that you could like print out. Like if you're struggling um, with uh, remaining positive, like if you're going to a tough through a tough period or something, you can um, print this out and like, I don't know, put it on your bedroom wall or your bathroom wall and like read it out loud every morning when you're brushing your teeth or, you know, getting ready for the day, putting on your makeup or whatever. Just kind of like remind yourself or, you know, cement this in your mind um, that, you know, you choose to surround yourself with positivity. So I think this is um, pretty dope and helpful. And you can do this with all 10 of these. And of course, you know, you can tailor your affirmations to anything like whatever you want to focus on um it doesn't have to be with remaining hopeful um it could be anything so you can use chat gpt to help you come up with some affirmations and then we'll just kind of scroll them back up like whatever doesn't resonate with you you can say you know i don't really like um let's say if you are a christian believer you can say i don't really resonate with number nine because i'm christian and i believe in god and not so much i'm just making something up <laughs> the concept of the universe and let's see what it says So it gave us a new affirmation. God has a divine plan for my life and every experience is leading me closer to his purpose for me. Even with when the path seems uncertain or challenging, I trust his wisdom and love, knowing he guides my steps towards the best outcome. Um, aligning affirmations with personal beliefs can make them more impactful and resonant, which I agree with. So that I think, you know, that's a good example of how you can, you know, use ChatGPT to kind of keep iterating um, when you don't get the outcome that you necessarily expected or you wanted to tweak it a little, you can ask it to, you know, just that. Can you tweak this a little bit? Um, I don't like this aspect of it or I like this, but not that. Um, can you improve this? Can you make it sound, um, you know, whatever tone and style you want to give it, you can absolutely do that with ChatGPT. And that's what I love. So it kind of assists you in your writing. And we can go into, um, I think I want to do a full session on um writing with chat gpt because one of the important things we didn't do any priming um when we started this chat we just asked it to come up with 10 affirmations to remain hopeful but you can um give it like a style and tone like the perspective that you're coming from like you know i'm a you know you can get personal with it you know i am a you know, 35 year old woman and I'm struggling with this particular thing and I want to remain hopeful and we can, you know, you can ask it to give you 10 affirmations to help you uh, with the positive mindset around that specific thing and see what it gives you. I mean, if, if the things don't resonate, then of course you don't have to use it or, you know, say those affirmations or what have you. But if it resonates, like you can kind of add that to your toolkit to help you with your uh, coping strategy. So I love that about ChatGPT.
And if you are someone that keeps a blog or likes to write articles or is thinking about writing a book, you can expand on what you're getting from ChatGPT and continue to write um, about, you know, continue on, you know, with your uh, ideas and thoughts and sections for the books. And you can kind of ask ChatGPT to help you um, flesh that content out um, to make it more prolific, to make it more ver ver verbose, um, whatever it is that you need. Because sometimes I feel like we get writer's block, we get stuck, we have um, good ideas and we may not have, you know, 30,000 words worth of, <laughs> of words to say around our idea. And you can, um, get a lot of inspiration from chat GPT. And if you, um, like share with it, like if you kind of copy and paste what you've done and ask it to help you expand, um, on what you've written, you can absolutely get a full book worth of content. If that's your goal, you know, to, to write a book. Um, and Wanda has a question. Let me expand this out a little bit. Just to be clear, this is only available with ChatGPT4, which is the play plan correct. Um, Wanda, is this for, um, is your question in regard to when we um, imported the document and got the summary of the show notes? Or is your question regarding um, the affirmations? Because we can do, oh, I did run these affirmations in chat GPT-4. Um, so the importing the files, yes, that is available in the paid version of chat GPT. It's only available in GPT-4 under the, um, under the, um, advanced data analysis, which formerly is known as code interpreter, that's only available on the paid version. But the um, the affirmations you can actually do in version uh, 3.5, the free version. So let's, let's actually uh, run this again in 3.5 to see how different it looks. I don't think it's going to look that much different. So I'm going to start a new chat. Yep, you were asking about the import. Yes, that's available in, um, in GPT-4. So let's run these affirmations in 3.5 for people that might be new to ChatGPT and just trying it out and seeing if it's worth um, investing in or playing with or anything like that. Um, we will run these affirmations in, in 3.5 just so you can kind of see what, what type of input you'll get. And uh, 3. version 3.5 is actually faster <laughs> than ChatGPT4 or GPT4. I'm not sure why. I think GPT-4 is a larger model, so it takes a little bit more time to process. But I mean, it's still, you know, seconds, like one second versus two seconds. It's not it's not a big deal. Um, but this is our um, this is our output. So let's look and see what it says. Um, I embrace changes as opportunity for growth, knowing that I have the strength to overcome them. Every setback is a stepping stone toward a brighter future, and I trust that better days are ahead. I focus on the present moment, finding joy in small blessings that surround me each day. My optimism and positivity are powerful forces that shape my reality in a positive way. I am resilient and capable of finding solutions that are even in the face of uncertainty. I am worthy of happiness and success, and I believe in my ability to achieve my goals. I release worries about the future and choose to channel my energy into productive and positive actions. I like these. I think I'm going to print these out. These need to go in a little card or something. So I usually like to go for an hour. It's 8.03. But I want to show you guys while I have these up because I think these are, um, I like these. And I don't know if I'm going to use all of them. But I think I might want to um, share these on my Facebook wall to keep myself inspired. But also to um, inspire and affirm others. So I'm going to hop over into Canva and I'm going to create some graphics using these so I can share on Facebook for the next few days. So we're going to do that in just a second. Um, I release my worries about the future and choose to channel my energy into productive and positive actions. Every day is a fresh start and I approach each new day with a hopeful heart and an open mind. I attract positivity into my life by radiating hope and optimism to those around me. I love that one. And I choose to see setbacks as temporary and hold on to the vision of a bright and promising future. Amen. That's where I am in life. 
setbacks are temporary. So what we are going to do is copy this. So you just click the little um, notepad or the um, clipboard there. And we are going to go over into Google Sheets. And I'm going to start a new sheet. And I am going to, let me see, if I do values only, that's not really what I want. Undo. Let's see if we just copy paste. Are we going to have to clean this up? Okay, so undo that. So we're going to go back to chat GPT. This always kind of throws me for a loop. So what we are going to do is say, can you please put this in table format? Without numbers. And so it's going to give us a table of these affirmations. So we're going to copy this again and see what happens. Nope. Undo. It's still playing with me. Boo. There's a way you can do this to get it to just paste the content. I'm drawing a blank on how to do it. Okay, so I'm going to copy. I'm going to try one last thing because I want to show you guys how to do this really. There we go. Got it. Okay, so I just had to copy out of chat GPT and paste it here. So what I want to do is go into Canva and do a, um, we're going to do bulk create. So this is an easy way to create um, a whole bunch of um, content really quickly. So we are going to do an Instagram post. We're going to do a square Instagram post. And let's see. Um, quote. I want to do this quick because I don't want to hold you guys. So we're just going to pull this one. So now what we're going to do is go under. So you can. So it's here for me because I've used this before the bulk create. But if you don't have bulk create here, you go to apps and you can scroll down and you can find bulk create. So that's what we want to use. So we are going to enter data manually because it's pretty easy. It's just one column that we're going to copy paste. And we are going to go to our spreadsheet and I'm going to add a column and call it. I need to give it a header. So I'm going to call this affirmations. And so we are going to copy this and we are going to paste, we're going to um, delete this column. Oh, we're going to clear table. So we are going to paste. So we have to call this affirmations. And we're going to delete, just delete this row. So now here's our affirmations that we got from ChatGPT. And we're going to say done. So we are going to click here. And we are going to say, do, do, do. Why is my bulk create not working? Okay, I'm having challenges, y'all. So there is a way that you can connect this data to your elements. So 
I'm going to delete this and add a new text box. Go to elements, or here, we're going to add a text box. And we can figure that out later, but here we go. So All right, y'all, so this is not working <laughs> the way I had planned. So typically it shows um, where you can do, you can add your data. You connect this to your data and you can um, do a bulk create and it's not working today. I am bummed. Let me see, um, quote. I just did this with my journal that I created. Ah, yeah, yeah. This isn't going well. Tech issues. It's not good. Um, maybe I need to ungroup it. How this is supposed to work is you go into bulk create. And you put your affirmations. We're going to try this one more time. Affirmations. And we're going to paste them here. So these are our affirmations. I'm going to delete this row. Say done. So here we are. So now we have to connect data. So we have our quote field highlighted and connect data and affirmations. So we after we have our affirmations where we want them we're going to drag this up to the top because there are some of them are a little long we click continue and say thank you Wanda did I assign the data it wasn't letting me when I was right clicking on the field before but when I um, set it up again it allowed me to connect the data so we're going to click uh, generate pages so now it has given us um, 10 pages just that quickly, it has given us 10 pages of all of our uh, affirmations. So now I can post these on my Facebook wall. Isn't that cool? How you can just create content like that or create your own <clears throat> like affirmation cards or I know some people do like um, affirmation decks that are kind of like card decks. So you could create a whole little like affirmation deck and um, Have your you know affirmations where you could pull a card every day or something like that and all you have to do is like go through each of these and kind of quickly you know format them uh, to the way you would like them to look and maybe center them on the page or whatever it is that you like and then you just go over here when you're done and click share and download and you're good to go you have 10 days worth of content or you know 10 graphics that you could use to uh, post on your Facebook profile and inspire yourself and inspire others. And you can also, with the quote source, you could do the same thing in terms of um, setting up your um, data. Like if you have, going back to that book create, you would just bring in two, um, what are the sources? I don't know what that is, but say like if you had two columns of data, you could bring in your affirmations here and then like whoever the person is, like whoever you wanna attribute the affirmation to, or if it's a quote or whatever, you could put it in this column. You would just swap out affirmations for name and then the name of the person for your email. And that's how you can use the bulk create feature in Canva. So that is going to conclude um, this week two for a dive into AI. If you guys are interested in getting my exclusive AI toolkit, you can um, go to bit.ly. Um, let me share the one for Facebook. Um, you can go to bit.ly at dive into AI and you can get access to my um, AI toolkit. And if you are interested in trying the um, our Midjourney uh, Black Art Prompts Creator, you can go to um, bit.ly Black Art MJ and you can try out the prompt creation tool. And Wanda and Sharika, thank you for joining me tonight and participating in the conversation. I appreciate you both. And I am going to send you that image so that you are free to use as you would like. <laughs>
compliments of me. So thank you, ladies. And, and for everyone that tuned in, thank you for watching. I'm so excited and glad you're here. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions about AI, um, please feel free to drop your questions um, in the comment uh, section below this video or on the event page. And I will either respond to your question individually or I will address them in one of our weekly live sessions. And I look forward to seeing you guys next Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Have a good night. Bye, everybody.